Okay, so I'm going to try to explain data structures by using a story, okay? So suppose we have someone, let's call her Jane, yeah? and Jane is a party host, and she's trying to throw some type of party, but then the only rule that she has to follow is that she has to keep track of where each and every single person is at the party. So let's say she threw a party in the past and then some people went missing. So now it's a lot that she has to find each and every single person when requested. Suppose this is an indoor party, okay? So this is a party that has some seats. Let me draw the seats out here. So as you can see here, these are the seats that she has at her party and the party can host about five people. So it's not really a party, it's more like a gathering. Let's just say Jane wasn't too popular, so it's just her family members that showed up at her party. So each guest can be seated just like this. The first guest that enters the party is seated right here. So now suppose we're looking for a specific guest at this party. We're trying to figure out exactly where guest number four is. In order to do that, we can just do some simple calculations here. Suppose the distance between each seat is about one meter. So from here to here, it's about one meter. So then if you wanted to find the location of guest four, all we will have to do is multiply this by four. So in that case, will be four meters from here all the way to where it gets four is seated. So just by doing some simple calculations, we can determine where each and every single guest is. So if I wanted to find where guest two is, I'll just do the distance, which is one meter times the index, which is two. And then I'll find guest two here. Okay. This right here is an indoor party that has seats. Now suppose Jane is trying to throw a different party and this time she doesn't want them to be too restricted to seats. So this is an outdoor party where you can stand wherever you want. It'll look like this. Basically, as you can see here, I guess they're just scattered all around and they can stand wherever they want. But now, it makes it a little bit more difficult to keep track of where each and every single individual is. So now suppose Jane came up with a brilliant idea. Her idea is that each and every single guest will be responsible for knowing where one other person is. So as an example, guest one here is responsible for knowing where guest two is. So this guest right here has to know where guest two is at all times. And now it's guest two's responsibility to know exactly where guest three is at all times. Okay. And then just like that, you just go down the line. So now suppose you want to know where guest four is, this guest right here. If I wanted to know exactly where this guest is, the first thing I'll do is start with my first guest, which is guest one. And then I'll ask guest one, where is the guest you're responsible for? And then they'll point me to that location. I'll go there and then ask this guest, where's the guest you're responsible for? Point me to this location. And then finally, this guest will point me to the location of guest four. And then when I get here, I just have to verify that this is guest four. And then if it is, then that means I've found guest four. So just like that, as you can see here, finding this guest in this type of structure right here is much more difficult because you have to go and visit each and every guest before them before you can get to the guest you're looking for. In this case, you just have to do a simple calculation and then you can find exactly where the location of the person is. Okay, you don't have to visit each and every single person before you can get here. So searching with this type of structure is much faster 
than searching with this type of structure. And this over here, this is what we call an array. And then this here, we call this a linked list. So right now you're probably thinking, so what's the benefit of this if this is much faster to search? There's no use for this then. But if you notice, I mentioned that this right here is an indoor party. So this is an enclosed space. And we have a maximum capacity of five seats in this case. Here, it's an outdoor party, so anyone can basically stand wherever they want, and we can always add an additional guest to this party. So let's say we wanted to add guest six here. You just basically need to make a new reference from guest five, just like that, and then point it to the location of guest six. And then we can just simply add more and more to our structure, just like that. Right here, since we have a limited amount of seats, there's actually no way we can expand this structure. If I really and truly wanted to make this a bigger structure, I'd have to basically find an entirely new venue for our party, a bigger space. Let's say in this case, there are going to be this amount of seats right here. So instead of five seats, now we have eight seats okay and now this new venue here which is still in a confined space is much bigger than this venue here and we don't stop there if we wanted to expand this we would have to ask each and every single guest here to move here so it'll look like this So now that we've moved all the guests from here to here, we have three extra spaces here that we can basically invite more guests to occupy. So in a way, if you wanted to expand an array, it's much more difficult. As a matter of fact, you'll have to create an entirely new array and, and shift things. But here, if you wanted to expand things, it's as simple as just adding one more and then changing the link from one to the other. It's as simple as that. So hopefully the story analogy made the differences a little bit more clear. But just to clarify, with an array, the advantage here is that we have fast searching. However, the disadvantage is that it's limited or it's not mutable or changeable. So when creating our array, however many spaces we specify, is what we're stuck with. So with the linked list, the main advantage is that we can keep adding on to this structure. However, searching through the structure is much harder. So let's get a little bit more technical and talk about how an array and the linked list are stored in our computer's memory. So suppose this grid right here is our computer's memory, okay? With an array, we are basically storing it by reserving a sequence of blocks, just like this. So with the linked list, we're storing items one block at a time, just like this. And as long as we have a reference to each block, we can keep track of where each block is. And the reason why we can't expand an array is because our program is not the only program that will be used in our computer memory. Yeah. Another program could also reserve this spot right here, for instance. And so if we wanted to expand this, we can't do that because we didn't reserve this space. If we wanted to ever expand an array, that's why we would have to create an entirely new array, a bigger size, and then move the data elements there. And also here you can see that with our array, each block size is the same. So if we were to search this array, 
it would be quite easy. We just do some simple calculations or simple math to determine where index number three or five is without visiting each one. So as you can see here, the way an array is stored in our memory and the way a linked list is stored in our memory is very different. 